The roadmap for the wildest ride in our lives is inside us thanks to our DNA. So would you be brave enough to discover where it leads? 12 New Zealanders have, and they're about to find out what really runs in their blood. Now, modern science can sometimes reveal more than we'd like to know. DNA testing is about to throw cricket commentator Lee Hart and presenter Sonia Gray a curveball or two. So I'm not probably going to inherit this. It's on lately. Okay. I don't know why families have so many secrets. <laughs> Lee Hart is known for casting his humorous eye of everything from cricket to sausages, but when it comes to his family, things get very serious. His DNA results will take him on a surprising journey, but first, here's his own take on his family's history. On my father's side, we came from Birmingham in, in England. I know very little on my mother's side. Her father, we know, came from Australia. There's been a rumour or legend that there could be Aborigine in the family somewhere, which would explain a few things on, on our side. Um, a few of us go and walk about here and there. I think I'd like to find a family history which is very similar to the characters that are in it now. I'd like to think they're sort of down-to-earth people, the characters perhaps. I'm a father with two children, a boy and a girl. I feel a bit more of a, as if I'm doing on behalf of the whole family. My kids, my parents, my brother, because we're all getting the information, the same information. I just happen to be the, the courier and just hope I don't stuff it up. Ah, hello, Lee. Welcome to the Inner Sanctum. Thank you. Great to be here. So, Lee, you were born on the west coast of New Zealand, and yet you have a South American connection. Yep, born in Greymouth on the west coast, which is a coal mining town. And my father was a coal miner. Um, and around about the time I was born, um, he gave that up and got involved in tunnelling, you know, hydro schemes. OK. Uh, so we left and went overseas. As I say, we were living 13,000 feet in the Andes. In, in Peru, so it was a very strong sort of formative memories for me before I came back to New Zealand. And it was only when I was about 10 that I started to even get a sense of my New Zealand roots. I have a world map here that's going to show you the countries where your DNA markers are. Are you ready to right, watch sure, this? Sure, yeah. Well, Lee, no Aboriginal DNA here. You're as English and Irish as it gets. But your DNA also has 3.4% Scandinavian markers which could mean a touch of Viking in your past. And of course, the Vikings came out of Norway, across the Northern Isles, which fits in with the other results we see for you. And we found over 931 DNA matches, and you're about to meet a few of them. But don't go packing your battle axe yet. All is not as it seems. Well, that's all you need to know for now. Take that with you, and uh, happy hunting. Thank you. Bye. Actually, a battle axe might be very handy for where Lee's going. But so long as he packs his luck of the Irish, he should be OK. Text from Richard. Never been there before? Exciting. I wonder who pays for the text, me or him? To be honest, I wasn't that surprised that I might have Irish heritage or DNA. My mother's name, maiden name is Crowley, which I think is Irish. But what was more surprising is that we never actually followed that line. Ah, Lee, your intel is correct. We are following your mother's DNA, and it leads to a last named Laura Houston. She's your third cousin, which means you share a great-great-grandfather. Hi, Hi, Laura. How's it going? Nice to meet you. I'm Lee. I understand we're related in some way. Third yep. cousins, perhaps. Yeah. Related through DNA. I can't wait to find out actually what sort of traits we may have in common, etc. Okay. Should we have a drink? <laughs> <laughs> so, Laura, what made you do a DNA test in the first place? Going back in Ireland for your ancestors is quite difficult because we don't have very much census records because it was a far in Dublin and obviously it was all paper census records. Right. So the far burnt all of the census records. 
So DNA enabled you to sort of tap into Exactly, going okay. a lot further back. You're not trying to find a kidney or something, eh? <laughs> I don't need a kidney in my health. So I've always worked for companies that have been doing gen genomic sequencing, which is another reason why I was very interested in getting my own done. Great. Do you know if we're related to anyone famous over here, like Bono perhaps or something? Or? No, but we're actually related to Anya, one of the singers from oh, the here. singer? Yeah. So she's my full fourth cousin. So it's a good chance I could be related to her? Yes, yes, definitely. And she's from Donegal, so it's all very similar place. Fantastic, because I, I did imagine when I, when I embarked on this journey that perhaps I could be related to someone really famous, relative Elvis Presley perhaps, you know, might have explained why I put weight on in the 30s, you know, in my <laughs> 30s and stuff, you know, but he obviously carried on and died, but um, yeah, it's a small world, isn't it? Anya. Mm. Have you any musical ability yourself? Um, questionable. I'm musical in the sense that I, I, I love music and I, I used to play in bands with, with my brother and and that's all I did for a while was music. My father used to play drums and that's why I got into music. He was in rock and roll bands so I think I'm musical but I'm probably more musical than I am talented if that makes any sense. So there, these are your haunts around yes, here? Yes, exactly. Yeah. When, it, when the sun's out. When the sun's out. Yeah, yeah. it can be pretty miserable in the winter if you're outside. <laughs> Can you live music? Yeah, I mean, there'll be live music in every pub here. I love it here, it's cool. Cheers. Cheers. Nice, nice to meet you. So, how can DNA prove that two people are genetically related? Tests have been developed that map our DNA, and that means we can now screen for inherited disease and even decode our ancestry. By comparing one person's DNA to that of others, we can find out whether they share segments of DNA, and if they do, that means they share an ancestor. Coming up, Sonia meets a long-lost relative and discovers her link to greatness, while Lee's Irish eyes keep smiling. Technically, he is a relative, so at what point can I ask him if I can borrow some cash? Now, as a formal model, Sonia Gray certainly knows about keeping up appearances. And now she feels totally connected to her African heritage, but it wasn't always that simple. She's had to piece together fragments of her family history and doesn't know as much as she'd like to. We can help to fix that. But first, here's what she does know about so far. We all want to feel a sense of connection. And I think family, um, family gives you that yeah, I grew up with my mother and her side of the family and I didn't grow up with my dad at all. He um, came to New Zealand when he was 17 on a scholarship. My sister and I have always been interested in one day being able to meet family on my dad's side. Sometimes in family histories there's things you don't really want to remember. You know, I'm sure life wasn't very easy <laughs> in rural Zimbabwe. But <laughs> um, even if we could uh, have anything to fill in, whether it's from hundreds of years ago or someone living or, or anything, that's more than what we've got now. Hi, Sonia. Hi. Welcome to the control centre. Thank you. Sit yourself down and let's hear all about you. Now, I know that you do this, this wheel, this lotto wheel. I do the lotto draw, yeah. You do, and I have to say, investigating your DNA is, is a bit of a gamble. You never know where it's going to take us. Um, <laughs> so what do you think you know about your ancestry? On my mother's side, I know quite a bit, because various people in the family have taken on a, the genealogical role. Okay. And, um, yeah, it goes quite far back. Come on, good people. Okay, bit so um, <laughs> there's some English, some yes. Irish, yes. some Scottish. Okay. Some Italian, I think. Oh, yeah, well, we might have something to support that evidence. Really? Yes, that's possible. Really? Yeah, we'll get there later on. What about your dad's side? Then? Okay, so my dad is from Zimbabwe. That's about as much as I've got. You don't know much about that at all? I have twin girls who are yeah. six, and I feel a responsibility for them to learn more about... Yeah, about their past. Yeah, and particularly for their kids and for, and for my sister and for her kids and for... Let's have a look at what we've got so far, shall we? 
Your DNA does show that your dad's African ancestry is, is clearly West African here. Um, uh, uh, Zimbabwe is more to the east. Uh, really? Your mother's side shows British-Irish uh, DNA, a splash of Southern European too, and that could be the Italian. Yeah. The lab have also found 925 DNA matches for you, darling. So you're going to have to prepare to meet some of those relatives rather soon. Now, before you go, I want you to take this with you. And we're going to keep in contact via that little contraption. Okay. And all I can say is, you know, have a lovely journey. It's going to be a fascinating one, I'm sure. Take care. Thank you. Bon voyage. See you soon. Getting to the roots of her DNA is going to show Sonia that she has a connection to the one man who really did know the long walk to freedom. Sonia, no doubt you're primed for travel to exotic climes, so prepare to board your first flight bound for Australia. So I've been racking my brain and I have no idea why I'm here. On Mum's side, they've done a lot of work tracing the family tree and I have never heard of an Australian connection. And Dad is from Zimbabwe, but maybe part of his family has wound up here as well. I mean, either way, having family to visit in Melbourne is nothing to complain about. All good. Sonia, follow this map and you'll find Richard, your third cousin. Best of luck there. Okay, this is it. This is quite random. Hi. Hello. Come on in. <laughs> hi. I'm Sonia. Oh, hi, I'm Richard. This is actually really exciting. I've uh, never, I didn't know I had any relatives in Australia at all. I didn't know I had many relatives in New Zealand. <laughs> well, there you go. This is crazy. Obviously, we've, we've been linked, yep. we're related, but who knows how. I do know how. You do? Yep. Oh, OK. Yeah. You relate to my father's side. How do you know that? Well, I have compared your DNA to mine. Oh, my... The wonders of, this is of scientific did... technology. Yeah. You know, we're not, you know, cousins or anything. We're probably about five generations away. OK, so we could have shared the same great-grandparent? More likely probably great-great-great-grandparent. Like my grandmother, she was adopted in 1894. We don't really know what happened before 1894. Right. So, and that's why I suspect you might come into the picture. Wow. It's not going to be on my dad's side. He's full African, and I don't think, don't think that's... No, no. 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 <laughs> so it's going to be on my mum's side. And yeah. what's great is that um, on both sides of my mum's family, people have done a lot of work. We've got this book, um, James and Catherine Leach, which were my great-grandparents from Bingley, Yorkshire. Ah. Nice. Does that ring any bells to you? We certainly do have uh, a lot of our relatives from the UK, and so there could certainly be a link. I'd love to read this one day to see... Yeah, I'm know, sure I can get you a copy. I think you should... We'll, we'll, have, we'll go through and we'll have a little yes. look to see if we can make any connections, but you should think about coming to New Zealand at some point. I there would are some love people to. I would love to introduce you to who are just as passionate about this sort of stuff as you are. It's so good to meet Richard. Such a lovely, welcoming guy. Now, this whole mystery of how we're connected will take a while to get sorted out, but I have so many relatives on Mum's side that are just as keen about tracing their past as he is. And in the meantime, I can share some pictures from the new family he's found. Oh, this is my message. This is where I'm going next. Um, sorry to interrupt. Now, I may have mentioned exotic climbs earlier, and I wasn't joking. There's a plane leaving shortly for South Africa, and you need to be on it. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, I'm so, I, I have, oh, I love South Africa. I have a very strong connection to it, and that is, oh, I feel a bit tingly. It's pretty wild to be back in South Africa because this place is, um, Really special to me. First time I came here was 15 years ago. Came here to model and um, landed in South Africa. Knew no one, no connection at all to this place. Touched down in Cape Town, stepped out of the airport and just said to myself, I'm home. Like I just had that feeling and it never left me and it's never left me. Been here multiple times, spent a lot of time here. 
I've never really known why. I guess um, I, I, there's this connection to the people and to the place and that feeling like something's happened here, you know, you feel alive. Hello, Sonia. Now, I'm sure most South Africans feel that Nelson Mandela is part of their family, but you have markers from the very same Hapra group as Mr. Mandela, which means you share a distant relation. Oh, my God. I wasn't expecting that. That's cool. That's really cool. We've heard of the Vikings and the Celts, but there are other more ancient clans that we all belong to. These are called haplogroups. There are tiny fragments in our DNA we carry with us that help us to map out how our ancestors traveled the world from the moment they left Africa. Now, yours is one of the oldest. Through your father's DNA, you're in the same ancestral clan as the great man himself. So this information um, has me on quite a high. I'm not going to be coming down from that for a while. Um, this guy is... He meant so much to so many and he epitomised the, the struggle, I guess, in this country. And he's my cousin. Kind of. Sort of. I'll roll with that. It's nuts. It's awesome. Thank you, Sonia. Enough dreams of glory. Time to follow a trail a bit closer to home, genetically speaking. You're going to go north and head back a thousand years in time. Happy trails. Next, Sonia discovers her thousand-year-old connections with a tribe while Lee checks out his family's old digs. So I'm not probably going to inherit this. It's on lately. Broadcaster Lee Hart's DNA has taken him to Ireland. He's already met a third cousin, but that's just the tip of the iceberg, genetically speaking. Ah, Lee, your link to Ireland's very strong. You know, there's even a small island linked to the family. Hundreds of years ago, your relatives became known as the Boils of Inish Keel. So if you head there, you're going to find a caravan with your name on it. A caravan with my name on it. That's fascinating. <laughs> Now, these days, the island of Inishkeel is abandoned, but the Boyle clan are alive and thriving on the mainland, where Lee will be meeting his fourth cousin, Patrick. A lot of questions for Patrick. I want to find out how he fit in, how it all came about. And of course, technically, he is a relative. So at what point can I ask him if I can borrow some cash? Must be the island that Richard mentioned. It's a beautiful spot. Wow. Patrick oh, yeah. Boyle, I presume. You're welcome. <laughs> Yo, what do you think of this part of the world? Well, it's, uh, it's beautiful, peaceful. Oh, it's very quiet. And you've been living here all your life? All the life, yes. I understand there's probably plenty of Boyles living in this. Well, there's a lot of them, but then there's, they're all kind of interconnected as well. And those you'll meet tomorrow, some of them are connected to us, some of them are not connected to us. So we're going to meet some more? Yep. <laughs> Around 30, we think. So it's hard to believe that my DNA pretty much started a lot of it here in this caravan park hundreds of years ago. Well, it would have been a caravan park. No, then, but uh, it would have been farmland. I mean, I've got so many questions I want to ask you over the next few days, but I'm home now. <laughs> well, so I suppose we, we should delighted. crack open the good stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a bit early in the day now to be cracking open the good stuff. Well, right? well, I'm in different times then. I always thought these travel shows with people on TV were always quite self-indulgent, I suppose, but... Then I got asked to do it, and I thought, what a great idea. Patrick and Lee's connections are through Lee's third great-grandfather, Hugh Boyle. But the Boyles go back much further than that. In fact, their ancestral fort may date back as far as 1700 BC. Perfectly oh. parked. So now we must welcome you to the home of the Boyles. Oh, nice. Hey. Oh, but... <laughs> <laughs> That was a good piece of <laughs> This is where we all originated from. Really getting deep into it. Yep. The name of the area would have been Boila originally. That would have been synonymous with the people that lived in this fort. And you can see from the sign there that the last guy at a big battle here was Conor O'Boyle, and he was killed here. 
So the boils, the name obviously came from from this place, from, from that. So this yeah. essentially is the, the, the centre of it all, yep. where it all started. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And how old is this? Three thousand years. Three thousand years. Let's certainly take the family back a bit. So I'm not probably going to inherit this. It's on lately. Okay. <laughs> wow. So you can imagine, in here they would have had all their families that would have been living in here. There would have been probably yep. thatched houses inside here. Very, very small low uh, houses. So it's an amazing view and you can see how it would have been so protected from people with this water. Yeah. So do you feel a connection, uh, a specific connection with this place, being well, a boil? Yeah. Uh, we would look on this as our own heritage, our own family's heritage, because it can be traced back okay. for, for years and generations. And you would have come here as a child, oh, I suppose? Yes. Well, every up. Sunday evening, brown trout fishing, making about, bring the girlfriends out. Oh yeah, okay. If these walls could talk. <laughs> I don't want them talking, no. <laughs> I think there was a moment for me when I sort of broke through with Patrick. It's, it's very strange, we're thrust together and expected to get along, and I think that moment happened on the island at the fort. You know, talking about his, his teenage years, coming over to that island and bringing girls, etc., over there as a teenager, and I could relate to those experiences, you know, having a few beers, that kind of thing, as you're growing up. So. For, for me, that was certainly a time where we, we connected. Actress and presenter Sonia Gray knows a lot about her mother's background, but she's learned virtually nothing of her father's, which is an African heritage. And so the DNA detectives are going to introduce her to her long lost family history. Now, Sonny, we know that your father was from the village of Rusapi in Zimbabwe, and we are trying to get you into that region, but it's tough going. We're working on it. So in the meantime, we're sending you up to the border to spend some time with those people from his tribe, the Shona people. We've arranged our rendezvous at an ancient village site that's been restored, Sonia. Now, they won't be arriving until dark, so local expert Robin is going to give you a little Shona village background. Where we are now is, is basically an old, ancient village um, based on the traditions of the Shona people. And if you have a look at the structure, these rocks, for example, they're all packed very closely and horizontally. So this definitely indicates that it's, it's Shona. So this sort of ha would still be in existence today or not in, so much? Very much so, yeah. If you go into the rural, like the really, really rural parts, you still find these huts. So your father's family would easily have lived in a community just like this. They still exist today and they certainly did exist when your father was around. Mm. It makes sense to me actually because my father's spoken of um, the, the straw roofs on, on the, the, the hut that yeah. they lived in and the fact that it would, in thunderstorms, it would blow up, blow off. <laughs> yeah. So this is possibly, probably what it, what it looked like. You know, they're very exposed to the elements. Uh, fire is another danger as well, because mm. these things do go up in flames. And there's constant repair of putting mud on to keep it in place and to look good. So it's not something that you put up once and it stays forever like mm. bricks. No, no, these things require a lot of maintenance to keep them going. It's one thing to hear these stories, not even stories, I guess, just little fragments growing up, but being here makes it all real. To see how my dad lived and to meet other Shauna people and see their dances, I mean, far out, it's, it's, it's great. They're celebrating here as the ancestors, and, and why they're dancing is to teach their children, their youngsters, about their ancestors. And it's not just for the Shona people, but the Shona people have their origins in a place called Mapungupwe. So they're okay. celebrating all the peoples, singing for all the peoples. All those tribes that originated there. That originated there. in this place called Mapungupwe. Wow. Mapungubwe has been uninhabited for hundreds of years, but it was here in 1937 that the earliest settlements of the Shona people was discovered. They were obviously a thriving community, and discoveries such as glass beads have proved that they were a hub of trade as well for Southern African people. Through her father, Sonia has direct DNA connection to the people that once lived here, a site which is guarded by rangers like Johan today. Okay, so this is Mapungubwe. 
Mapungumbwe. Yes, Mapungumbwe. So I've recently found out I'm of Shona descent, and that connects me to this place, doesn't it? Yes. People who occupied this place, for me, they went to Great Zimbabwe. We definitely is the Shona people. These were my ancestors. Lived. Definitely is your ancestors, Ooh. because it's a Shona name, Mapungumbwe. The Shona tribe have DNA indicating that they're originally from West Africa. And this means that they must have migrated from somewhere in that region to here about a thousand years ago. It's right here that the earliest evidence of that Shona civilization has been found. So this, we're in South Africa, here, and just across that river is Zimbabwe. So close. And there's Botswana. So it's, it's amazing to think that my ancestors probably followed the water down from here hundreds of years ago, settled here. This is the beginning of the Shona Kingdom. And then just popped across to Zimbabwe. That's the closest I've ever been to Zimbabwe, where my dad is from, and of course, generations before that. That's the closest I've ever got. And that's, that's pretty cool. Next, Sonia takes an expedition to her father's homeland, while Lee meets a pub full of boils. A bit of a boil up, as we call it, in New Zealand. From DNA testing, Lee Hart's discovered he has Irish connections, and through his fourth cousin, Patrick Boyle, he's discovered that those connections may date back as far as 1700 BC. And these strong family ties are going to take us to the island of Inishkeel. My third great grandfather, Hugh Boyle, born in 1819, was born in this island. And this is the person who moved to Australia and consequently to, to New Zealand. Perhaps this is the church where he had communion or got baptised, who knows, but it's fairly run down now. The guy that would have been related to you that, that was buried here is just there at the edge, and he was a bishop. So he's, he's unmarked, is there any reason it's unmarked? No, no, it's just gone now. The... So that's interesting, so I've got a relative who was buried here. Yep. So another Boyle name there, Alan yep. Boyle. We're not sure how she fits in, but surely part of the same family. And this symbol here was also, is that pagan? Yeah. So we were pagans? Well, I don't think so. You must remember back at that stage, the pagan feasts were all linked into Christian ones. And let's not confuse pagan with bogan. Bogan is a different thing there. Different thing pagan. altogether, yeah. Lee, time to meet some livelier relatives. If you head up to the cafe, you're going to find some hungry and thirsty Boyles waiting for you. You're going to shout them around or two, I believe. So we've got a few boils here now. And a bit, uh, of, a, a bit of a boil up, as we call it, in, in New Zealand. It's great. You look at the old faces and you think, oh, yeah, there's a connection there because they're old. But when you see a young child, you suddenly realise that the DNA that's in my children, as well as me, is also in these people. This story is going to carry on for many generations. You know, and kids remind you of that. That's what it's all about. So now that we're all here, um, who's got a couple of grand I can borrow? <laughs> yeah, well, good luck with the fundraising, Lee, for the renovations. You're going to need a good chunk of change to fix up the old family home. Now, Hugh and Mary Boyle's traditional cottage from the early 1800s is still standing there. Just. So they would have had dinner here. They would have every decision they made, every, they would have talked about perhaps moving to Australia, probably right over here. You know, it's hard to imagine even who they were, but what is amazing is the fact that had one of them not have, had not been born or even moved, I wouldn't have existed at all. So that's what's amazing. So that's the only thing that really matters, is the fact that a good deal of my DNA began here, or was here. Better work, I'll probably fix it up and move back here. Maybe put some aluminium joiner in the windows there and cover steel roof. Yeah. It started to, to sink in a little bit that I certainly do have a DNA connection to this place. And in many ways, it's a small town that is not that dissimilar to the a small town where I was born, Rananga, on the west coast. I can see why people that left Ireland many years ago would have felt comfortable in New Zealand in certain parts. It's peaceful. The 
people are simple in the best way. It's, it's a simple life. Launcher, cloud your war. Thanks for your help, man. Fantastic. The thing I'm most um, pleased about is the fact that the people I've met through this experience have been good, down-to-earth, normal people, and they've got normal number of fingers on their hands, which is, which is a bonus. song I used to play back in the... Well, 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 I hope you're well rested. Your DNA test shows that you have Stone Age cousins from over 40,000 years ago. More on that once you land in Croatia. Meanwhile, in South Africa, actress Sonia Gray has been on the DNA trail of her Zimbabwean father's heritage. So my dad's people, the Shauna tribe, were here in South Africa thousands of years ago, but they wound up in Zimbabwe. And I've never been to Zimbabwe, and I know it's a lot different now than when my dad was there, but I would still love to go to his home. You know, that would, it would mean a lot. Here you go, a little bit left. A little bit left. <coughs> Yield it. Sonia, now it would be foolish to deny that recent years have been tough on your father's homeland, but despite the restrictive travel rules, we found someone who's going to take you across the border into Zimbabwe. Cool. <coughs> I'm going to Zimbabwe. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to Zimbabwe. Now, as we all know, Zimbabwe isn't an easy place to visit these days because under the controversial rule of Robert Mugabe, those who oppose the government have been beaten, vanished or killed, the economy's collapsed, and many have fled to South Africa to provide for their families. Agnes is one of many Zimbabweans now living in South Africa, and she's agreed to take Sonia over the river to their shared homeland. Are you Shauna? Yeah, I'm Shauna, yes. So my dad is Shauna, of yeah. Shauna descent. Can you, can you tell me some short, basic, very basic, Shauna words, like, uh, hello? Hello, Makadi. Oh, yeah, ma that's hello. Makadi, Makadi. Mm -hmm. Makadi. Yeah, Makadi, huh? So you said? It's, I'm fine. OK, um, so, so I say to you, Makadi, and you say? Ndiripo shangu. Ndiripo Yeah, yeah, it's, it's I'm fine. <laughs> so tell me about your family, your children. I've got three boys and uh, two girls. The twins are 17. You have twins? Twin boys. Twin boys, I have yeah. twin girls. Oh, OK. This is actually, I really, I've always been interested in this mm. because um, I fell pregnant with twins and everyone in New Zealand said, oh, do twins run in your family? And because mm. they don't run on my mum's side, oh, but okay. someone said to me, Twins are very uh, very popular, popular yeah? and very common in oh. in Africa. Really? Yes, yes. Even we can have even four quadruples. Yeah, even triples. Oh. Very common. Yes, oh, yeah. Oh my in goodness! Africa, yes. So I'm yes. glad I just got the twins. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Life in Zimbabwe these days is very difficult because of the political situation. But long before the political situation, life was so good. Are you hopeful? Yes. I'm For Zimbabwe? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you have to be, yeah? <laughs> mm. Mm. Mind the steps, the stones. <laughs> uh, slippery, yeah? Yeah. Ta-da! And we're in Zimbabwe, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made it, finally. <laughs> How do you feel to be in Zimbabwe, Sanya? Well, I've waited a long time to be here. Okay. And um, it's good, it's a triumph. Right. Like a home away from home. You are in New Zealand, how is it in New Zealand? It is my, that, that, New Zealand is my home. I'm a New Zealander yeah, and I'll your, always be a New Zealander. Your home is in Zimbabwe, it's not New Zealand. <laughs> oh, now I'm torn, now I'm torn. <laughs> yeah, you are between two tribes now. 
Yeah, <laughs> I am. That New Zealand tribe. Yeah, <laughs> and Zimbabwe tribe yeah. also. Yeah, it's interesting, yeah. isn't it? That whole, yeah. your identity, especially when you've, you know, you've got two halves. Yes, yes, uh, but it's no, no problem of, with that. Uh, we, we, you, the most important thing is to know where you came from. Yeah. Yeah, your background. You know, it's interesting, <laughs> a friend of mine before I... Um, before I came here, sent me a, a Māori whakatauki, I think it's called, like a proverb. All right. Um, your past is your future and your future is your past. Yes, 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 and exactly. I feel like that here and it feels like that's important to, to your people. Yes, yeah. it's very important. Mm. Mm. I feel like the big piece of the puzzle of who I am has been filled in. It's quite a peaceful feeling. Yeah, just to have a story, you know, when someone says, where are you from? I used to say Wellington. Now I will proudly say that I am half Zimbabwean of Shauna descent. And if anyone's interested, I can tell them the history. Coming up, Sonia finally gets a glimpse into her father's living history, while Lee travels to the home of his Stone Age ancestors. So they obviously found a lot of bones here. Yes. And how old are they? 120,000 years. Lee Hart's already met his Irish relatives, but now he's about to go back further in his family tree than he could have ever imagined. It's a journey back to the Stone Age in Croatia. It really is beautiful, I can't believe it. One of the most peaceful places I've ever been to. And it's great being away from technology and having none of that sort of life interfering and... I'm so sorry to interrupt you, Lee, but you're living proof that Neanderthals hooked up with humans before they died out because 2.7% of your DNA has Neanderthal markers. Now, since you're related, you're off to visit the family man cave in Krapina. Now, it's not as tidy as the Boyle's old place, but then again, it is 40,000 years old. Local guide Tanya will meet you for this very unique open home. So we are actually on the Neanderthal site here in Krapina. It's the largest Neanderthal site in Europe and one of the oldest here. Okay, so they obviously found a lot of bones here. Yes. And how old are they? 120,000 years back. Oh, okay, yeah. and they're probably more advanced than we first thought. Yes, some findings uh, say that they could even talk. It wasn't right. really um, like we do today, but they did have a certain way of the communication. Language, yeah. Which is amazing, because obviously humans and Neanderthals were living alongside each other. They were living in some kind of a tribe. They had rituals together, burying and things like that. So, Which explains a bit, because I apparently have 2.7% DNA of Neanderthal in me. I'm not sure if that's a lot or not, mm -hmm. but it suggests that perhaps at one stage there was a combined family vacation okay. <laughs> with the uh, Neanderthals and the... Okay. It's, yeah, it's amazing to think that right here where we're standing, there would have been families, you yes. know, living, sleeping, eating right here. Yes. It was a great experience being at that cave for a number of reasons, mainly because it was such a beautiful spot. But secondly, that's where they found all these bones. So I can imagine the guys maybe 150 years ago or 100 years ago when they, when they found those bones, what a remarkable historic discovery it was. But then of course, the history itself, that you had people very similar to us living there, you know, eating, living their lives like we do right there in that spot. And that was actually quite, um, quite mind blowing. Because I've been tracing my DNA around the world, I've been to Ireland, and I was wondering if I was going to feel a connection with, with any particular place. And it's amazing, I've come back this far, and this is the first place I've started to feel uh, an eerie feeling about the fact that ancestors were here before me. Back in South Africa, TV presenter Sonia Gray has followed the path of her father's tribe, and even crossed the border to step inside his home country but much of his history still remains elusive. It's been great learning about my people and my history, but even though I know what the Shauna did thousands of years ago, I still don't know anything about my dad's history. I don't even know what his parents' names are or what his life was like growing up. And I want to fill that gap. I wish I could fill that gap. 
Sonia, we know that you wish to know more about your father, and your wish is our command. On the table there, there is an envelope containing a dossier about his past. Now, as you know, Sonia, his tribe are the Shona people, and he grew up speaking their language. He spent his early years in the village of Rusapi in eastern Zimbabwe. He would swim in the river, play soccer and cricket. My dad played soccer and loved cricket. I love cricket. There you go. <laughs> Now, his parents wanted him to get an education and sent him to school in the capital. His father's name was Cephas. He was a policeman, a hard-working street cop. He enjoyed his job and was very respected. Pretty much knew none of this, so this is all a revelation. His mother's name was Christina. She was very religious and encouraged John to attend Sunday school and become an altar boy. I'm really happy that it sounds like my dad and his family had a, had a happy life because I always had the, the belief that it wasn't good because he didn't talk about it, so... Oh, it makes me really sad that I didn't know any of this until now, to be honest, because it's, it's all positive things. There's nothing negative here. And um, I think it would have been... And it's all positive information, and it would have been really nice to just have known it and have it as part of the, our story, but, um, but that's cool. <laughs> I know it now, and I can pass it on to my children. I don't know why families have so many secrets. <laughs> he had two younger sisters, Winnie and then Gladys. Unfortunately, they both died. But Winnie had two children, and this means that you've got cousins in Zimbabwe. And unfortunately, we don't know their names at this point of the game. I didn't, I didn't know that his um, sisters' names were Winnie and Gladys. So that's really nice to know, to have some names, you know? This... Yeah, this is really important to me. You know, when you feel like a whole lifetime of um, stuff you've held in, it's just... <sighs> this is all good, though. This is all really good. It's very positive. <laughs> it's just... Um... It's just quite a lot to take in. Even though it doesn't seem like it's a lot, it's a lot to take in. There are certain things about my father that I've struggled with, and coming here, um, I can see that um, perhaps those things are cultural differences that it sort of hadn't ever occurred to me would, you know, that he would have still. I can really see that it must have been such a huge change for him to come from a small town in Zimbabwe to Wellington, where there was no one that looked like him, and to have to start a new life. And maybe it's easier just to not talk about, to almost forget the past and not talk about it because you're creating this new future, because you just need to survive in this whole new culture. So I, have a, I think hopefully I have a better understanding of that and um, appreciation of what it must have been like for him. Learning about our DNA can certainly give us a fuller picture of who we are and help us appreciate the way our diverse heritage mixes to make us all unique. Now, we all have a cocktail coursing through our veins and it's just a matter of understanding the recipe. And the DNA detectives have shown just how complex, exotic and nuanced our wonderful 12 New Zealanders were. That's the end of this series. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you'll join us next year. <laughs>